Hey, boys and girls. Hey, welcome, everybody. Teachers, faculty, and staff. Listen, welcome to Learn with Stern. Listen, I want to greet everybody in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And I welcome each and every one of you. But today, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to continue. We're going to complete and we're going to continue our story on Esther, y'all. Listen, we're going to try to wrap this up today because the school year is almost over, man. And I know that most of y'all are just tired. You're just ready to just, woo, hallelujah. But I want to make sure that everybody get an opportunity to understand the life of Esther. And I want you to get the full gist of why God wanted you to know about her life. Listen, because Esther was so significant. She was so significant in the biblical history. And she is going to be significant in your life if you embrace her. If you embrace her life and you accept the trials and the tribulations, boys and girls, and ladies and gentlemen, because we can relate. If you accept the trials and the tribulations and can relate to the trials and the tribulations that Esther gone through and went through for her people and how God orchestrated that whole situation. Man, listen, let me tell you something. The battle was won. But I want to make sure, let's go ahead and start for the sake of time. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time uh, talking and introduction and so on. I want to get right down to it because we're wrapping up. And then, listen, I want to make sure y'all are here this Friday, y'all. This Friday, make sure y'all are here this Friday. We got an awesome hype service for y'all, man. Listen, we're excited about what God is doing, man. God is going to do an awesome thing in your life, and he's going to speak to your life. So I want to make sure that everybody is here. This Friday, make sure y'all are here because Friday, y'all, we're going in. Friday, that's right, Friday, you are coming back. So listen, we're starting, remember chapter 8. So last week, remember we talked about Mordecai. We talked about Haman and Mordecai. We talked about having haters in our life. We talked about people hating on you. So here it is, we knew that Haman, how he felt about Mordecai and how he felt about Queen Esther's people. And see, but he didn't know that Esther was a Jew. He didn't know because remember, y'all, her uncle Mordecai told her, shh, don't say nothing. Shh, don't say nothing until the right time. And you see, y'all, Esther had favor. She had favor with her husband. She had favor with King Ashur because the king told her, say, listen, whatever you want, whatever you ask me for, you got it. She said, you can have, the, you can have half of the kingdom if you want it. But listen, but all Esther asked, she wanted her people spared. And y'all remember, y'all, boys and girls, remember we talked about a gallow. And y'all remember I told y'all what a gallow is and what it means. So whenever you see that word gallow, you think about the hangman. When y'all draw the little stick, the little hangman, and everybody got to put a head, an arm, a leg. and then, But the pole, the pole that stands up, that is called a gallow. And so remember, Haman built this gallow for Mordecai to be hung on. Who could tell me how many feet high was the gallow? Who remember? How many feet high and why was the gallow built so high? Yes, I want you to tell your teacher. Whoever get the right answer, I hope the teacher give you a piece of candy. So let's go ahead. Watch this, y'all. So now we know that, that we, we got Haman out the way. And uh, Haman, listen, whatever Haman meant for evil... You see what I'm saying? He meant for evil, it backfired on him. And so that's why it's very important, boys and girls and ladies and gentlemen, that you be careful how you treat people. Be careful how you treat your parents. Be careful how you treat your teachers. Be careful. You never know, man. Listen, I'm telling you all. Listen, God, y'all, listen. You don't believe nothing else. You believe me when I tell you, God said, listen, I... He says, I will execute justice for the oppressed people. I will take care of it. That's right. God said, listen, if you just be still, I'll fight your battle. If you just be still, said the Lord. So God will fight for you if you let him. But make sure, boys and girls, that y'all don't go around mistreating people. Make sure you know how to treat people right. So we're starting in chapter 8. Watch this, y'all. Starting in chapter 8. So there's a decree Watch this. The decree has been revoked. What decree, you say, Mr. Ferguson? The decree. You remember the decree the king made that all the Jews, because of Haman, all the Jews are to be killed? Remember that, y'all? Yes. So now you're getting ready to see that the decree has been revoked. It's been canceled. 
It's been changed. And, and it's the same way in your lives. It's the same way in your life, boys and girls. Listen, let me tell you something. And I'm declaring and decreeing right now. Whoever I'm speaking to, I don't care if it's a first grade, a kindergarten, a second, a third, fourth grade. Listen, you know, you know if there has been a tax on your life. You know that there are people around you that hate on you. You know that there are people that don't like you. People that don't want to be your friend. There are people who wish that you would not even live anymore. But I'm here to tell you that the God that we serve, y'all, listen, hey, let me tell you, his favor is on your life. If you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, the blood of Jesus covers you. That's right. The blood of Jesus is covering you from all hurt, harm, and danger in the name of Jesus. Build and develop a relationship with our Lord and Savior. Watch this, y'all. So the decree has been revoked. On that day, watch this, the king assures give the house of Haman, the Jews' enemy, the Jews' enemy, the house of Haman was the Jews' enemy, y'all, unto Esther, the queen, the queen. Wow. And Mordecai came before the king, for Esther had told what he was unto her. Oh, wow. Look at this. And the king took off his ring. He took off his ring, y'all. The king took off his ring. Listen, he took off his ring, boys and girls. Watch this. He took off his ring, chapter 1, verse 2, which he had taken from Haman and gave it unto Mordecai. And Esther set Mordecai over the house of Haman. You see that, y'all? You see, boys and girls, you see that? When somebody mean to do you wrong and somebody want to hurt you, somebody want to harm you, God will flip that situation, man. I'm telling you, but you got to believe. You got to believe and trust God, boys and girls, like never before. Because the devil seeks to try to destroy you and he will not get the victory over your lives. You got to believe. I'm telling you, listen, I'm, listen, I'm reading the Bible. This is the Bible. I know y'all like, Mr. Ferguson, this can't be happening in the Bible. This sound like one of them BT soap operas. No, I'm telling you. Boys and girls, look at this. Watch this. And we're talking about a husband and wife, the king and the queen, y'all. That's right. The king and the queen working together as one. Look, watch this. So the king took his ring off, which he had taken from Haman after they got rid of him. And he gave it to Mordecai and Esther. And he sent Mordecai. He went on here. Now Mordecai is in charge of the house of Haman. So Mordecai got Haman's job. <laughs> Woo! I'm sorry, y'all. I got excited, but I got goosebumps on now. Look at goosebumps. Whoa! You like this part? You really got goosebumps, man. Listen, cause I've seen God do it. I've seen Him do it in my life, and I know He's gonna do it in your life, boys and girls. Whatever and whoever the devil is using to try to destroy you and try to hurt you and harm you. God one day will work it out, boys and girls, but they will they will end up having to bow to you. They will end up having to need you. They're going to end up having to, to come to you for help. But just stay faithful. Just like Mordecai, y'all. Please remember, Mordecai did not try to hurt Haman. He did not try to fight back. He didn't say any bad words about Haman. Remember? Mordecai, he just did his job every day at the gate. He just did his job. He just did his job. He just kept doing his job, and he trusts God. He trusted that God will avenge his people, y'all, through his niece, Esther. Watch this. So let's go, y'all. Come on, y'all. We got to keep going. Verse 3, watch this. And Esther, she spoke yet again before the king. And she fell down at his feet. Oh, my goodness. And besought him. With tears, with tears to put away the mischief of Haman, the Agiite. Listen. And his device that he had devised against the Jews. When the king held out the golden scripture, listen, watch this, the golden scepter towards Esther. So Esther arose 
and stood before the king and said, It is pleased, and if it pleased the king, and if I found favor in your sight, and the king seemed right before the king. Look, watch this, y'all. Right, and it seems right before the king, y'all. And I be pleasing in his eyes. Let it be written to reverse the letters devised by Haman, the son of the Hamadada, the Agiite. Listen, watch this. Which he wrote to destroy the Jews, which are in all the king's provinces. Woo! Y'all see that? Y'all see that, boys and girls? Listen, man. If you don't get that, listen, you got to get that. Because here it is. It's showing you and it's telling you, boys and girls. You see that? Look at how she got favor. She got favor. Oh, my God, favor. And favor is upon your lives. Y'all need to believe that. Listen, why do you think y'all at Shepherd of God Christian Academy? Why do you think you end up with somebody like Mr. Ferguson speaking over you, teaching you the word of God? Why, boys and girls, you don't see the big picture? Listen, all of that is God's favor on your lives. All of that is God is moving you in the direction that he wants you to go. Because he has a plan and a purpose for your life. I'm telling you, watch this. Listen, there are no coincidences. And then watch this. Look at what it says. This is what it says. Let's go down. Let's keep going. Watch this. In verse 6, it says, For how can I endure and see the evil that shall come unto my people? She says, Oh, how can I endure to see the destruction of my kindred? My kin folks, my cousins, my, my nephews, my nieces, my uncles, my family. Then the king Ashoshur, watch this, said unto Esther, the queen, and to Mordecai, the Jew, Behold, I given Esther the house of Haman, and him they hanged up the gallows. Because he laid his hand upon the Jews. You see that, boys and girls? That is why the king hung Haman, y'all, because he threatened to kill the, his wife's people. He tried to kill his white people. Watch this. He says, also, I'm going to write also concerning the Jews, as it pleases you, in the king's name, and seal it with the king's signet ring. For written, which is in the king's name and sealed with the king's ring that no man can reverse. Boys and girls, listen, once it's sealed with the king's ring, he has a special ring, y'all, that has his signet indentment. In, and once he put his, it's, it's like a wax that they will put on their decrees, on their papers. And he will put his ring, he will mash it down into the wax. And it has a printout. It has a printout of his his um his emblem for the king, y'all, his symbol for the king. It was only his. He's the only one that has that type of seal. And when he put that seal on it, it is done. It is finished. And then let's go down. Watch this, y'all. So here it is. Let's go to verse 9. The victory for the Jews. Because we run out of time. Watch it. The victory for the Jews. So now in the 12th month is the month of Adar on the 13th day of the same. Watch this, y'all. When the king's commandment and his decree drew near to put in execution in the day that the enemies of the Jews hoped to have power over them, though it was turned to contrary. You see that? It was turned around and reversed over. You see that? Over them that hated them. The Jews gathered themselves together in their cities throughout all the provinces of King Ashur to lay hand on such as sought. You see, they're hurt. Look at this. And no man could withstand them. For the fear of them fell upon all the people. So everybody became afraid of the Jews. You see that, boys and girls? Nobody could touch him. They say, For Mordecai was given the king's house. And his fame went 
throughout all the provinces. And this man, Mordecai, waxed greater and greater. You see that, boys and girls? Mordecai continued to move up higher and higher and higher. You see, now Mordecai ends up at the king's house, y'all. Then it says, so the Jews smote all their enemies with the sword, slaughtering and destroying them, and did as they choose with those who hated them. You see that? So now the Jews had the right to take care of everybody that was out to kill them, everybody that was out to hurt them. They had a chance to get rid of all of them. And look at this, boys and girls. And I'm telling y'all, listen, this is just so awesome. And I want to make sure, let me go, I'm going to go ahead and close out. Because I want to make sure I end this with, I want to make sure y'all see the end. It said, but when Esther brought the matter before the king, he commanded it in writing that Haman's wicked scheme, which had devised against the Jews, this is chapter 9, verse 25, all against the Jews should return unto his own head and he and his sons should be hanged on the gallow. Therefore they call these days Purim, the day of Purim, after the name of Pur. Therefore because of all of this that was done and all of this in that letter, boys and girls, and they had faced, listen, in this matter and what had happened to them. The Jews ordained and took it upon themselves and their descendants and all who joined them with, listen, it, that without fail, every year they would keep these two days as the appointed time and as it was written. So to this day, boys and girls, the Jews still celebrate and they make jokes. I remember people make jokes about the Jews have a lot of holidays during the school year and stuff, the Jewish people are out of work and they're out of school because they have so many holidays. But these days are so sacred because these are God's chosen people, y'all. Listen, let me go to 31. To confirm these days, watch this, to confirm these days, days of Purim should be observed at the appointed time as Mordecai the Jew and Queen Esther had commanded the Jews and as they had ordained for themselves and for their descendants in the matter of their facts and their lamenting, which means their crying and their grieving, and the command of Esther confirmed these observance of Purim, and it was written in the book. You see that, y'all? Through a lady. Through a lady. Oh, my God. Through a woman, y'all. Through the queen. Those holidays, y'all, to this day are still acknowledged and still celebrated because the queen, Queen Esther, a woman that had no mother, who had no father, but she had God's favor, boys and girls. She had the favor of God. Listen. And chapter 10, come on, y'all. Chapter 10, let's go. Those who got your Bibles, come on, y'all. We're in Esther chapter 10. We got 18, 19, 22, 19, 22. Four more minutes. Watch this. King Ashur, look at what it says. There's only three verses in chapter 10. King Ashur laid a tribute, which means a tax. He laid a tribute upon the land and upon the isles of the sea, upon the coastlines of the sea. This is what King Ashur did. And all the acts of his power and of his might and the full account of the greatness of Mordecai, to which the king advanced him, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Media and Persia? Verse 3, for Mordecai the Jew was next to King Ashurus, and great among the Jews, and was a favorite with the multitude of his brethren, for he sought the welfare of his people and spoke peace to his whole race. He spoke peace to his whole race. Mordecai, a servant of the king, 
who ends up becoming the closest second next right hand man to the king. And I'm here to tell you, boys and girls, listen, some of you that are sitting here under the sound of my voice. You need to understand that there's going to be times when things are going to get rough. Things are going to be hard and they're going to seem unbearable. And you're going to say, Mr. Ferguson, I can't. But I want you to get on your knees and look up to the God, look up to the sky and say, God, I look to the hills from which my help cometh. And I know that my help cometh from the Lord. Help me, Lord. And that's what I want to encourage you to do today. And I want you to believe, boys and girls, like never before and have faith like Mordecai. Have faith like Queen Esther. And y'all have walked with me on this journey. Teachers and administrators, listen, y'all have walked with me on this journey. Some of y'all may be going through something right now, but I'm here to tell you that God, if you continue to trust God, he will see you through. God will see you through that situation. Because his favor, his favor is upon your lives. So those of you that are here, and if you want to accept Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, you can do it right now. Ask God to come into your heart and forgive you for all your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness and fill you with the Holy Spirit and confess that you believe that he died for you in Jesus' name. Amen. Boys and girls, don't forget this Friday. I'm excited, y'all. Listen, I have a word for y'all Friday. Listen, we're going to have an exciting time. Y'all get ready. Be excited. I want your mom. I want your cousins. I want your aunties, your brothers, and sisters on the Zoom live. We're going live this Friday, y'all. This Friday, live. Come on, y'all. Y'all pray for the man of God. Y'all pray that I be in good health, that I make it, that no hurt, no harm, no danger come upon me. Thank you all. God bless you. I love you. Shalom.